In this video, I'm going to show you how to digitally fill and sign any PDF file. Let's get started. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about four different scenarios. I have put timestamps in each of the scenario. So if you're interested only in one type of scenario, you could just click on the link and view only the portion of the video that is of interest to you. The first scenario is a PDF file that can be filled and can be digitally signed. We can't see it here in the browser, but we'll get back to that. Scenario number two is a PDF file that can be filled, but there is no digital signature and we'll see how we can sign this type of form also. Scenario number three is a normal PDF file that cannot be filled. You can print it and fill it by hand, but we'll see how we can digitally fill this form and even sign it. And the fourth type of form is a document that has been scanned and saved as a PDF file. We will see how we can fill this form digitally as well as sign it. The first thing we need to do is to save the PDF file on our computer. As you can see, currently all the PDF files are open on my browser and you can't fill and sign a PDF file using your browser. So let's go ahead and save the file. We right click on it and we can say save as and choose a folder on your PC to save the PDF file. I have already saved all the four PDF files on my PC. So let's move to the next step. Make sure you have Adobe Acrobat Reader installed on your PC. If not, you can download it from the Adobe website. It's a free download. We are now ready to fill our first PDF file. Let me open the first form that has been enabled for digital signature. As we can see, the fields that are marked in the light blue shade can be filled up by entering the correct information. The form is now filled and the last thing to do is to sign it. This form can be digitally signed and if I click on this field which is marked with an orange color, it will open the digital signature dialog. If you have already created a digital signature, the name will be listed here. But let's say I want to create a new digital ID. I do that by clicking on configure new digital ID. I have three choices available for creating a digital ID. Either to use a digital signature creation device or to import a digital ID from a file or to create a new digital ID. Let's go with the creation of a new digital ID. Let me continue. Once you create a digital ID, you must tell Adobe what you want to do with it. You want to store it in the Windows certification store or I want to create it as a file on my PC and I'm going to do that and I click continue. Enter your details. The mandatory fields are the name and the email ID. You can add optional information about the organization unit and the organization name. I will leave it blank and let's say we continue. Make sure you protect your digital ID with a strong password. So let me put in the password. You have to re-enter the password to make sure it matches. And click save. Our digital ID is now ready. To insert this digital ID in a PDF file, click continue, re-enter the password and click sign. Adobe will ask you to save the digitally signed PDF as a separate document. You can use the same name which will override the existing file or you could give it a different name. For example, dash signed and click on the save button. The file is now 
digitally signed and secured. What happens when you open a PDF file that is digitally signed? On the top of your PDF file, you will find a notice which says that this is a signed PDF and that the signatures are valid. If I scroll down to the signature and I click on it, first of all, I get a notice that says that this is a valid signature. And uh, it mentions that the document has not been modified since the signature was applied. I can check the properties of the signature, who signed it, and we can see that the signature originates from this email id, john at gmail.com. What happens if I try to make some changes to this uh, document? For example, instead of John Smith, I change it to John Adams. The notice at the top of the PDF file now changes. It says at least one signature requires validation. Similarly, if I click on the signature, it says this is no longer a verified signature. So if you make any changes to a digitally signed document, all the previous signatures in that document becomes invalid and the document needs to be re-signed. Let's move to scenario number two. This is a PDF file that can be filled but it does not have a signature field. Let me quickly fill this form. I have completed the form and if I want to add my signature to this form, I can use the second method of adding signatures in Adobe and which is this option called sign document by typing or drawing a signature. You can add your signature or your initials and store them. So if I want to add my signature, I just click on the plus button. There are three ways to create a digital signature. The first is to type your name and Adobe will create a signature for you. The second is to draw your signature using the mouse like this. And the third option is to use a image of your signature that you have previously scanned and stored on your computer. And this is my preferred method of creating a signature. Here is a sample signature that I created. I did the signature on a blank piece of paper and took a photo of it using my mobile phone and transferred it to my PC. Now before I use this as my signature, it would be a good idea to remove the white background and make this as a transparent signature. If you are good in Photoshop, that's very easy to do. If you don't have Photoshop or the skills to remove the background on your own, my recommendation is to use a website like remove.bg where you can upload the image and it will do an automatic background removal for you. And this is a perfect signature that you can use in your PDF documents. So I will download it. In PDF, I select the image and this is my image with the white background removed. And it shows me like this and I can apply. So as you can see, the signature can now be inserted anywhere on the document. I can resize it to make it big or small and move it exactly where I want it. And that's it. My document is signed. If I try to save this document now, I will get a warning message because this is a fillable PDF without the security features of the digital signature that were available in scenario number one. So what Adobe does in such cases is it saves a copy of the document but makes all the fillable fields read only. That means no future editing of those fields is possible. If you want to proceed with this option, I can say save a copy. I'll give a different name to it. Let's call it signed. And this document that I have filled and signed cannot be saved as is, which means I have to discard the changes that I have made up to now. 
If I open the signed PDF file now, I can see the signature at the bottom here. And notice that these fields can no longer be edited. They have become read only. So this is a fillable PDF that has been signed using method number two. A final note on PDF files that can be filled. If you want to ensure that you can make further changes to this PDF file, do not sign the document. In this case, if I save this file without a signature on it, then I can open this document again and make further changes to the document. The third scenario involves a PDF file that cannot be filled. So as we can see, this is not a fillable PDF file. If I want to fill this PDF file, I can use the same feature that I had used in scenario number two, which is to sign the document. When I click on the sign document, I get this new menu option. And the first item is called add text. If I click on the add text, I can go to any area in the PDF file and start typing. If I want to change the color of the text that I'm typing, click here and choose a different color, for example, red. When you are in the text mode, Adobe will try its best to determine where the fields are and you see that they turn into light blue color. But not all the time. For example, here, it cannot determine that this is a field, but I can still type in that place. Once you have filled the form, you can sign it as we had done in scenario number two, which is click on the sign button, pick up your signature and place it on the document. Resize it and move it till you are satisfied with its position and you can then save the document. Again, I'll give a different name. Let's say sign. And we are done. The final scenario is a scanned document that has been saved as a PDF file. And the technique that we will apply in scenario number four is exactly the same as scenario number three, which is to use the sign feature, select the text box and start typing the text. The only difference between scenario number three and four is in scenario number three, Adobe tries to determine where are the fields. But in this case, it cannot because this is a scan document. There is no text that it can automatically recognize and define as a field. We have to position our cursor at the right place and then type the text. If you want the signature to be attached to the document, click sign, pick up your signature, place it on the document and then save the document. So there we have it. Four different ways of filling and signing a PDF document. Depending on the type of PDF file that you have, you can use one of these techniques that I have shown to you in this video.